Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this series of Python interview questions for DevOps. And as you can see on my screen, today is day sixth. So in today's video, we are going to talk about two programs which are often asked in an interview. And the first program would be prime number or not. And the second program would be prime number or not in an interval. So how the second program is different from the first one in the second program, we are going to ask from the user that you have to give for an interval like first interval should be five and second interval would be 20 and all the numbers we have to calculate uh, inside that interval and then tell tell as an output that whether these numbers are prime number or not. Okay, so there is one very interesting thing in today's topic that we are going to talk about something known as for else not if else. Yes, you heard it right for else. So how do we use it? We're going to talk about that. And then we'll talk about another interesting thing, which is known as multi line comments. All right. So uh, if you're new over here and have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Okay, so as you can see on my screen that right now we have this prime number or not and then we have prime number in intervals. Okay, so let's talk about the prime number or not. So uh, this is the whole program and this is the multi line comment that we were talking about. So you have to give three inverted commas and after that three inverted comma to close it and inside that whatever you will write would be treated as comment. So this is multi line comment. You already know that single line comment is hash but if you have to give multi line comment then you can give this and you can give this all right. So this is how it works. So let's dive right into the program and understand. So what we are doing over here is we are taking an input as an integer and we are asking the user please enter a number then he he's going to enter a number we'll make sure that he does not enter any kind of negative value or some kind of zero so we are comparing here here that number should be greater than one so if he gives it zero he or she gives it zero then it should fail so let us test the negative scenario first so we'll give zero one over here hit tab enter it is asking for a number so i'll give minus eight which is a negative scenario so it is saying that enter a valid number. So our first test case is pass. So again, if we'll give zero over here, then let's see. Then it is saying that please enter a number and then enter a valid number. So I hope you guys have already have an idea of what exactly is a prime number. So if if you do not have any idea of prime numbers, let me give you a minute and ask you like what exactly is a prime number. So a number that is divisible by only by itself and one is known as a prime number and they are mostly useful in cryptography. So example two, three, five, seven and 11 are prime numbers and so on and so forth. So two is the only prime number that is even apart from that every prime number is generally an odd number. All right. And we do not count one as a prime number. So that you have to keep in your mind. I'll again reiterate a number that is divisible only by itself and one is known as a prime number. Okay. So oh, let us understand it. Now we'll talk about the positive condition. So if a number is greater than one, then it will call this function. Now everything is in this function itself. So as soon as it goes over here, it is going to pass a parameter over here. This param is a short form of param. You can write anything else. Okay. We are going to run a loop for i in range. We'll start from two. We won't start from one because there is no use as you already know that one we do not count as a prime number. So two and then till what? Param. So the range would be from two to param. After that, we are going to check a condition that if param is, uh, this is not divide, this is modulus operator. Okay. If that modulus operator equal to equal to zero, it means that if it does, so what we expect is every prime number, if divided by something else, then it should not, uh, it should uh, not leave, leave a zero. Uh, in, in the remainder. So for example, if you divide seven by one uh, by two, it will leave a remainder of one because two threes are six and seven minus six is one. Again, if you divide it by three, then it will leave three to the six and then it will leave one. If you divide it by four, then it will leave remainder as a three. Okay. So this condition is if somehow it is divisible by any of the numbers, then it is not a prime number. So in a in a scenario of six, when six is over here and it is divided by let's say two, then two threes are six. So remainder is zero. So that is why that param, which is the number is not a prime number. So just take a pause over here, understand it that 
if a number leaves remainder as zero then it is not a prime number okay so as soon as we find it then we just break the statement and then this we come out and then the loop again goes okay and now pay attention that this if is not is an indentation with else they are not at the same we are using for and else over here so this works on the logic that the else cause of the for loop runs if and only if we don't break out of the for loop that condition is met only when no factors are found which means that the given number is prime so in the else cause we print that the number is prime over here okay so now let's test it so uh, before moving forward i can show you that these are the prime numbers over here so let us say this is the condition these are the numbers okay so we are going to check 2 3 5 and 7 and let's see what happens okay so let us test prime number or not and then we are going to test 7 and it is saying that 7 is a prime number and we already know that now let's test about 17 17 is also a prime number so let's test it and it is saying it is a prime number now let's test 4 over here okay so if we test 4 is not a prime number why because if this for loops from range from 2 till the number if the number is 4 over here and then 2 which becomes i over here and then param 4 modulus i which is 2 will become 0 why because 4 is divisible by 2 and you already know how for loop works once it becomes 2 because it starts from 2 then it will divide 4 and leaves the remainder as 0 then it is not a prime number let's see what happens if we give the input differently so if i give 2 over here it will say 2 is a prime number why because 2 is over here 2 is going to come over here because the range is still 2 and then 2 divided by 2 gives you 0 then it will become as a prime number so i hope you guys have understood it so i've cleared the screen okay so this is one part of it and this is for else statement which i talked about so you can just understand it how this is working so this is one more thing that you learned in today's video all right now let us dive right into prime in intervals okay so now uh, let's not talk about this first we'll talk about this part first so the first interval is the first input that i'm going to take and then the second interval is the second input that i'm uh, that i'll be taking i'm checking a condition over here that the first interval should be greater than one and second interval should be greater than two i don't want someone to enter something like first as first interval as two and second interval as one because it won't go in a negative scenario right so i don't want to this so that's why i've given this condition and first interval should not be less than second interval I don't want first interval to be less than second interval. All right. So this is the condition. Okay. Uh, if you are confused, just pause the video over here and check what exactly I'm trying to say in this line and then move forward. If yes, then just call this prime or not. And then pass the first interval as the first value, which is the integer value. And again, for the second interval over here, we'll understand it later. Let's test the negative scenario first. Okay. So this is program number zero two. hit tab, enter. And the first interval is let's say one and the second interval is only one it is saying that enter a valid range which is this yes you, yes you have to enter a valid range all right now let us again the scenario in which we'll test this condition so the first is two let's say three and this is two so it is also asking that enter a valid range okay so these are the negative scenario that we have tested and they have worked. So let me just clear it. CLS. Oh uh, yeah, I am running it in command prompt. So if you're using PowerShell, they should be clear or something else. Okay. Now let us understand the program. So for example, if the range is, but let's say two and 10, then it is going to fulfill this condition and it is going to call prime or not function. All right. So how does it work? Let's say run the program give a condition 2 and then 10 okay i'm not going to hit enter now i want to show you that within 2 and 10 there are 1 2 3 4 4 prime numbers which is 2 3 5 and 7 so let's say if that works 2 3 5 7 and you can see it is saying that 2 3 5 7 is a prime number so 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number 5 is a prime number and 7 is a prime number 
Okay, so this is how it works. Now, again, the same thing, same logic, almost same logic. Now, what we are doing is passing the first parameter as the first interval and the second interval for i in range. Now, make sure that you understand it correctly. For i in range, we have to run from first till second plus one. Why? Because because we want a value to be run till the last value plus one. After that, we are going to use another for loop from two till i. Why we are doing it? So understand in this program, what we did is we have to take a value i and then have to divide the parameter, but we cannot do it over here because we cannot make sure that i and first, we cannot make a combination of this. All right. So that's why we have to take two for loops. So now what we are going to do for j in range two and then i, so what we'll do over here is i, which is this j, which is this. And then if it is equal to equal to zero, then we are going to break it and then it will print. This is a prime number. Otherwise it is going to run again. Okay, so let us understand in this same scenario. So what exactly happened over here? So once the value becomes two, it will make a call to this function. The first value goes over here two. the second value goes over here is 10. Okay, so now I is two, it will run from two till 11. Okay, and if I remove this, this will throw an error. So do not do that. Okay, now take a pencil and paper and run the iteration with me. So for the first time, I'll delete it later and let's see how the iteration runs. Okay. So in the first iteration, I becomes two and your J equal to, it is running from two. Okay. So this is two. Now the first condition is going to run from here. So what will happen Two and this a modulus operator divided by sorry, two modulus operator two equal to equal to zero. Yes, it is going to, it is going to be zero. And as soon as it becomes zero, it breaks and the control goes over here in else. All right, because if an else are not in the same indentation for an else. So this is something you need to understand. As soon as it breaks, it is going to print. So what was the value of i? So i values was two, so it is going to print two is a prime number. Now let's talk about the second iteration. In the second iteration, what happens? So in the second iteration, i value is only two. So the iteration goes from here first and then goes over here. So in the second iteration, what is the value of i? So the range becomes this, right, two. So the second iteration like this, so two and two. So this will end over here. In the second iteration, what will happen? Now the value will increase. So this will be three, okay? And then this will become three, i. So j is two only. So because it will start from two. So i, what exactly is i? i is three, j is two, what will happen? Will it give equal to equal to zero? No, because it will give one. So it will break. Once it breaks, it goes for next iteration. In the next iteration, I will be the same and two will become three. Okay. So once it becomes three, the condition will come over here. Three modulus operator three equal to equal to zero. Yes, it will break and it will go to else and then it will print three is a prime number. What happens in the next iteration? The i will become four, but j will become two. So the condition, so i equal is four over here and it is two over here. So four modulus operator two. So I'll show you more to explain four modulus operator two equal to equal to zero. Yes, because four is divisible by two. So it won't release anything. And then the next iteration In the next iteration, what will happen? This two will become three. This will become three. Does it equal to equal to zero? No, right? So it is not 
it is uh, it, it won't fulfill and 4 is not a prime number okay so let me remove this because we do not need it anymore now there is one more thing the interviewer can ask you that can you show me what is a prime number and what is not a prime number so you can add this line okay so I'll just remove it to show you what exactly it can do for every thing it will run and show you which one is a prime number and which one is not a prime number so if you want to do that what you can do is let me check I'll give the same number okay so 2 and 10 it'll show you that 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number 4 is a prime number let me expand that 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number 5 is a prime number 6 is not a prime number 7 is a prime number 8 is a prime 8 is not a prime number 9 is not a prime number 10 is not a prime number so you can uncomment this line and understand the logic that what exactly is happening over here because it will make it much more easier for you to understand so uh, i hope you guys have understood this part and if there is anything feel free to comment below i know it can be a bit uh, wholesome right now to understand but you can take a pause write take a pen and paper and understand how the loop works how the iteration would work make sure the value the first value takes some things over here the next value of j how this is happening over here and then calculate and then get the answer so uh, apart from that if there is anything else that needs to be done feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one